Hello everyone, I'm Scott from Mobilization Funding. Um, we are here today with Caroline and Bruce from Associated Payroll. And I wanna make sure that you guys are able to get some good information from them, from us, through our conversation and dialogue. We're getting tons of questions from our common customers and customers alike, that could, their friends and family members, and there's lots of information out there. So the intent of what we're trying to accomplish today is um, go through some questions and answers, get some common um, topics out on the table, give you an update to where regulations and new possibilities, new laws are all stand today, and um, let that be a good avenue for you guys to get new information and know where to go get it, some places you can trust. So Caroline and Bruce, if you don't mind introducing yourselves and a little bit of your business quickly, I think that would be helpful. Oh, well, my name is Bruce Katz. I'm one of the owners of Associated Payroll and Human Capital Management and Total HR Solutions. And uh, Caroline is uh, one of our consultants and uh, partners with uh, Total HR Solutions. So uh, I'm honored to be uh, here with Caroline as well today. But uh, thank you for the opportunity, Scott and Autumn. Perfect. Yeah. And so like Bruce said, I'm with Total HR Solutions, uh, Caroline Catlander. And, um, you know, we've been incredibly busy the past couple of weeks answering a lot of questions like this. So happy to answer whatever we can. Great. Um, let's start off just general purpose questions and get a little idea. There's a lot of stress and worry out there right now in the business environment. Um, things that we're having customers ask us is, you know, what do I do with this information? What do I read? What don't I read? What actually applies to my business? What doesn't? Our common customers really are around either government contracting, construction, uh, fabrication and manufacturing, some restaurants, retail. And so I think if we generally speak, it doesn't seem like anyone is out of the woods or, or exempt from what's going on right now, whether it's even dealing with the problem or, or what solutions are out there. So can you talk through some common uh, questions you're getting or the, the most important three, four things that companies should know. Our average customer is also a relatively small business, you know, less than a hundred sure. or less than 200 yep. most and, and kind of touch, touch on that. The goal in this is really to siphon through what is usually coming from super long email that most people don't either can read or don't read and don't even know what parts to take and just give them good 20, 30 minutes of just the real info. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the first thing we say, and it is hard because um, there, there's a lot of information out there and a lot of information being pushed to people. Um, we're saying don't read most of it, right? Look at the trusted sources that you have um, because there's a lot of interpretation of these regulations and laws that are coming out. And, you know, Scott, like we were talking about a few minutes ago, the Families First Coronavirus Response Act is a robust act. Um, the government has released it. It goes into effect April 1st, um, but they haven't released the regulations. They haven't re released the full scope of what this looks like. So it's going that they've told us that will be released in April, but we don't have a date. It could be towards the end of April. So we're telling people just to kind of take a deep breath and pause for a moment. Um, one thing is they are giving businesses a 30 day reprieve. So if within the first 30 days of this law, you don't execute it perfectly, that's going to be okay, you know, as long as your intention, obviously, is to do the right thing. And they're doing that because those regulations aren't out yet. Um, you know, we've heard things today about, well, what about unemployment? Everyone's going to get an extra $600. What does that mean? That hasn't even passed yet. That's part of a different regulation, set of regulations and laws that hasn't, hasn't come through yet. So um, I, think, I think those are the, the biggest things we're saying to our clients is trust Use your trusted resources. For them, it's us, right? Come to us, ask us the questions. Don't Google it. Don't get it on Facebook. Don't get it from your neighbor who is suddenly an expert in infectious disease. Um, and then realize that you do have some time to kind of put things together. One of the keys right now is, I think owners need to look, despite what the law, what the, um, what, what's coming out is, what are you going to do to survive, right? What are you going to do to survive the next two weeks, four weeks, six weeks? Now, there's some uh, great things in the new act that are going to allow em employers to get uh, payroll tax credits for certain payments that have to be made to somebody who's sick with the coronavirus or that may not be able to work and may have to be home, um, you know, being involved in childcare with their kids because their kids aren't in school. So these things are great, but like Caroline said, that could take some time to implement, figure out and implement. 
So I think the most important thing right now is to do what it takes to survive for your business the next two and four weeks. A, make sure everybody's, make, make the common sense uh, call about what's going to keep your employees and you safe. That's number one. And then number two is what do I need to do to get by right now? Do I need to, um, do, you know, do, do I owe a payroll this Friday? What am I going to do about, about making that payroll? What am I going to do about making the next payroll? Help is on the way with all these um, things that Congress has passed. But, the, but, but like Caroline said, that could take a few weeks to, to mull, mull their way through it. And what we're helping our clients do right now is maneuver the world of unemployment and temporary furlough, you know, furloughing employees and what, what they can do to get by right now. I was going to say, there's a great question um, or a great topic on that. We have the same thing. Customers say, what do I do first? The question, is, the answer is clear. You have to survive. You've got to be alive when the solutions come or it won't matter. And digging yourself in a deeper hole and failing to act or waiting is the biggest concern I have for our customers or other businesses. Um, frankly, it's the biggest concern I had myself. And we're in no different business waiting exactly for these same contemplating these same problems analyzing what the solutions are and making quick decisions so that we can be alive what are you telling your clients um, right now and to try to decide what they need to do in order to stay alive what are their decision what's the decision tree so to speak you know analyze a first this second and third what's that tree you kind of walk your customers through I mean, I think for us, one of the biggest things that, have, that has come up is people are saying, you know, companies are saying, I need to lay people off. And one of the conversations we have over and over again is, well, let's look at a furlough versus a layoff. And what's a furlough? What does that mean? So understanding the differences between those two has been, I think, really important for our clients in deciding, again, what steps to take now that is going to make it much easier and more successful as we move forward. Um, so I can go through the differences if you'd like, just so people kind of understand. Yeah, what's um, the high level difference between a furlough or yeah. a dismissal? So there's really three key differences. The one thing that's the same in both, and we talk about caring for our employees, is that employees under both circumstances can apply for unemployment. So that does not change whether it's a furlough or a layoff. With a furlough, the employees remain your employees. They are not their employment is not terminated from the company. They continue to be your employees. So that means two things. For them, it means if there's a continuation, there's a continuation of benefits. So they are, if they're on health, if they're on dental benefits, there is a seamless continuation of benefits for them. For the employer, you have to figure out then, well, how do we handle you know, the employee parts of the premiums? And there's different ways to look at that. Um, but for the employee, the continuation of benefits is huge. Also with a furlough, because you are not terminating their employment, and this does differ state by state, um, but because you're not terminating their employment, if you live in a state where at the time of termination you have to pay out accrued vacation time, accrued PTO, you don't do that. Um, they keep that accrued for when they return to work when all of this passes. That's a furlough. With a layoff, again, employees can apply for unemployment, but they are terminated from employment with your company. So they are no longer employees. So for benefit purposes, that means you're then looking at a COBRA option. Um, so your employees will have to go on COBRA um, in this time where they're not employed with you. Obviously there are a lot of rules and regulations about how layoffs are done, how you bring people back. But from a benefit standpoint, they go through COBRA. And again, for those states where you have to pay out accrued vacation or PTO, because you aren't technically terminating their employment, you have to pay that out at the time of termination. So, you know, both options work um, for companies. It's just making the decision of, of which one works best for you at this time, um, both for you and, you know, for your employees that, again, we're looking at long-term success and bringing people back. So two quick questions come to mind for me on that. How long can someone be on furlough? Sure. And what are the questions um, or what are the things that need to be understood about either A, bringing them back, or if you're on furlough for some period of time, and then the decision is made to terminate employment? So as of right now, a furlough can go four weeks, but there is an option to extend um, that for another four weeks. So essentially, we're looking at eight weeks for a furlough. 
Um, if within that time you, you know, things change. And again, again, I think that's, that's a hard part right now is we don't know how long this is going to go on, but within that time, if things, if circumstances change, you do have the right to change um, the dynamic of that kind of separation and go with a layoff. So that wouldn't, it wouldn't stop you from being able to lay off people, um, you know, down the line if you felt like circumstances changed. And actually there's some help on the way with this as part of the uh, care um, provision um, that was passed. Their cl uh, companies could qualify, I'm saying could, because again, this has not been rolled out, uh, potentially for bringing people back at their full pay or bringing them back up to their pay pr prior to this occurred, to this occurrence, and to actually have this paid for via an SBA loan that will then get waived if employers meet certain, like keep employees for a certain amount of time. They will then actually have those payments um, retracted and they won't need to pay them back. So this is kind of a moving target, but it could be that these furloughed employees down the road could end up being brought back and, and, and paid again through, through, this, through this act. What are you seeing from um, your typical client base as it relates to even construction or contractors? Are you seeing them starting to do layoffs? Are you seeing construction sites impacted? What are your thoughts around construction and, and or manufacturing companies and what they specifically are going through? I, I can comment a, a little bit on this because I've talked to a few in the last 24 hours. Um, I would say that that compared to retailers, contractors seem to be focused uh, affected a little bit less at this point. Um, they, some of their projects do seem to be going on still at this point. So um, I do see every business getting smaller, keeping a, what they call a skeleton crew, um, getting by on as few a number of employees as possible. But some of our people in the construction fields do seem to still be working right now. And I know that could be different from state to state and what the rules are about uh, what a required employee, a required business is. Um, but I see that, that in, those industries have, have been affected less so than retailers. I don't know what yeah. Caroline has seen on her Yeah, part. I can comment on that. I think, and I agree with you. And I think a little different perspective, not, you know, contractors for sure, but a lot of companies are just becoming um, more creative in how they're using this time. Because I think, you know, most employers want to keep their employees um, employed and engaged. And so what we've seen with some contractors and people in the construction field is a lot of them are very heavily training focused, whether it's safety training, compliance training, with us, HR training. Um, and this is an opportunity where in the past, we're saying, okay, can we get the training done between six and seven or seven and eight before they go out to the construction site, where they're saying now, okay, we have more flexibility, we can't be on site. Um, but let's keep them employed. Let's keep them engaged. Let's get this training done. Let's do it virtually, you know, versus in person. Um, and, and using this as a time to get some of those, those things done that they would normally be trying to do, you know, before the workday starts or after the workday. Um, so, you know, and again, it does vary state to state, you know, um, depending on what, you know, the governor of your state is saying in terms of in Massachusetts, we're shelter at home. So, you know, that makes a big difference. We're seeing a lot of customers on our end as well, particularly in construction. They're either, even in the states where there's the most heavy guidance to staying home or even mandates, we're seeing them still be part of the exception. Construction sites seem to be, still be very active and even whether it's residential or commercial. We mm -hmm. particularly only work with commercial construction clients, but we are seeing no slowdown in construction sites anyway. Um, there, I'm certain, certain there's impacts to all the companies involved on a construction site, but as far as the site being stopped or shut down or closed, like a restaurant or retail, we're not, we haven't seen much of that at all. Very, very limited amount. Yeah. And I think OSHA has made some, and I, and I can't speak to them specifically, but I think even OSHA has made some exceptions in terms of who they're shutting down and who they're keeping open, um, mm -hmm. you know, dependent on the type of construction they're doing. So I've heard that as well. And I think I've, actually heard that in the city of Austin, we have um, Mayor Marty Walsh, who's made some um, exceptions for construction that has to do with the healthcare field, so. So let me change gears real quick. Let's say we have a customer or an owner of a business today, and they may be your customer now, and they're coming to you and they're like, look, I wanna keep my employees. I know I'm gonna be okay to get on the other side of this. 
But you know what, Bruce, you made a great point. I don't have the money that's going to make payroll this Friday. Like, what are my options? What are my choices? It's, it's gonna, it seems like it's going to take too long for the government to do this, or I keep logging on and the site's crashed. What do you answer? How do you answer that question to them, or where do you guide them? Uh, well, I think that the furlough is a, is a great option if, if, yeah. if they can, because that's something that can be put in place very quickly. And a lot of states have, um, have sped up their uh, waiting period to, for people to get unemployment. Um, so that is, that is probably one of the best quick fail-safe methods, uh, besides looking at alternative financing like home equity lines, um, payroll funding products, um, you know, yeah. stuff that's kind of, you know, merchant cash advances. You know, some of those are, are, are things to do when there's no other options, but the furlough is probably the best first option if they feel like it's very temporary. Um, that, that, that would, that's, that's really number one option to go to b besides these other financing mechanisms. Um, that's what I've seen. I don't know, Caroline, if you've seen anything else besides that, but I, I would say that that's probably a, a majority of the calls you're getting are about furlough. Absolutely. They are. I mean, you know, I think companies are doing their best again to be creative um, on how they can keep their company going. But if that's not the case, then yeah, I mean, that we're having lots of conversations around furloughs and what that looks like. Yeah. You know, this would be great perspective for, for you guys to answer. H having, having worked with thousands of different companies, seeing their payroll activity, working with them on a week to week or every other week basis, just running their payroll cycles. What have you seen and heard in your opinions or the impacts that merchant cash advance loans have made on these businesses, positive or negative? Well, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of merchant cash advances. I mean, they, they, you know, you're talking about like retailers, you know, with the traditional merchant cash advances. Um, uh, I feel that, that um, they're rarely the best solution um, because they're very expensive and I'd rather see um, clients not do them, but they're very good in extreme situations where a client doesn't have any other, um, you know, borrowing capabilities, and they're going to miss out on some sort of an opportunity by, by not doing it. Uh, when they're doing it just to keep the doors open for another couple of weeks or another month, that's obviously, you know, they're just throwing, you know, bad money after good money, um, or bad money after bad money. But mm -hmm. there, there are very rare cases where merchant cash advances, like, you know, I, we have a deli client that's near a college campus. So he may need it a couple of times a year when his sales will go way down for a couple of weeks uh, or for a few weeks when either the kids are home or in the summer. So he uses it very sparingly. He happens to have no other financing options. So he uses it only when he has to. And it's, and it's a lifeline for a very short period of time. Um, these payroll funding products work very similar. They're not as expensive as merchant cash advances, but they're, they're, they usually are best for clients that have a timing of money issue where you know, they're, they're in a low margin business like payroll, like um, restaurants, excuse me, like payroll is actually not a bad <laughs> uh, margin business, but um, re restaurants um, will be in a low margin business and they may get a lot of cash uh, credit card receipts over the weekend, um, but they may need to make a payroll on Friday, but the timing of their money comes in a couple of days late. So they may every once in a while uh, have to dip into what they call payroll financing, where they get the money to make a particular payroll on a Friday. They can pay it back the, the, few, the next Friday, and they probably have a lot of funds coming in on credit card receipts the following Tuesday and Wednesday to do it. So again, not good if you're doing it every single payroll, um, but it's a, it's a good product if you're using it sparingly. In terms of what's next, where customers can go get the information they need, what are the most trusted resources outside of yourselves, or if you're having any upcoming classes, webinars, your website that they can go to, they know they can trust, they've now got a chance to spend some time with you and they can quickly and easily access the right info and know that it's updated from a source they can, that you could recommend. Sure, I mean, certainly when it comes to what, if the, what are the, um, what are the regulations look like? Again, and we, and we say this on our webinars, right? Don't go to Facebook, don't go to Google, don't go to your neighbor, right? So make sure that you're going. If you want to read those regulations, go to the DOL website. Get it directly from them. Don't get a version of it that someone has posted somewhere else. So if you really want to read it, 
right front to back, that's where you should be getting it. Um, Do you if you Department of Labor, correct? Department of Labor, yes, sorry, thank you. Yes, the Department of Labor. So make sure you're getting it directly from them. Um, you know, we are running webinars every single week, multiple times a week. We are updating it. I think I, I don't think I've actually repeated a webinar yet unless I'm doing them back to back because things literally are changing every day. Um, so, I mean, I can share our website. It's uh, totalhrsol.com. They can reach me at Caroline, so C A R. O-L-I-N-E at totalhrsol.com. Um, we can send them out a schedule of the webinars that we're doing. Um, and I think what, you know, I think what makes ours a little bit unique is that we don't try to answer every question because the reality is there isn't an answer to every question. So sometimes we really just have to say, we don't know yet, right? We can tell you what we think it's gonna look like, um, but the truth is we don't know yet. We'll get back to you when we do. And that's why we're changing these webinars continuously based on that updated information. But you know, if you don't wanna sit through a webinar, just um, go to the direct source of whatever it is that you wanna look at. Don't go to a version of it that someone else has provided because inevitably it will have been edited. Appreciate that. So far we've talked about a bunch of good things so far today, but one of the things I wanted to make sure we touch on is what, what other questions, concerns, um, issues, are you hearing from your customers or businesses that we haven't addressed yet today? And can you touch on some of those? Well, I think setting up funding and fi funding or financing is very, very important right now. Uh, we touched on it a little bit, but I think clients have to have the right financing mechanisms in place so that when these type of things happen, they can get through two to four weeks. So whether that's a line of credit they can get with their bank, whether that's talking to somebody like mobilization funding, whether that's talking about setting up a payroll funding product, um, whether they need a home equity line for a short amount of money here and there that they can invest in their business. But I think that that's really critical that companies talk to their CPAs and other advisors and make sure that when the dust kind of settles on all this, because it will settle at some point, they make sure that they have the right lifeline set up for their business moving forward. Understood. And I think from an HR standpoint, what we're telling clients is have a response placement plan. So, you know, many people, um, well, I don't think anybody could predict this, but you know, a lot of companies don't have a plan in place for an emergency situation. And the reality is we can't define what that emergency is going to look like, um, but having a response plan in place so that, if and when something does come up again that's unexpected, that you at least have some guidance and some guidelines to go to. Um, and you know, that's something that, you know, as, as again, as the dust settles on the other side of this, we'll be looking at with our clients to prepare for, you know, a next time should it happen. Any questions you guys have for us or for me that um, we didn't address today, or I could offer any advice to you all for things you've heard from your customers that you might need or want? An answer to or assuming I can have one <laughs> I think you know I understand what your company does you're, you you have a great resource Scott for your clients and we're just trying to be there for our clients right now so we're talking to a lot of non clients as well who just want our advice yeah. and we're we're giving that you know on the payroll side I know that Caroline's getting a lot of calls with uh, companies who aren't currently using us but but need quick answers to questions on how to get to, through this time in terms of an employee uh, HR and management perspective uh, I'm getting calls from companies we don't do payroll for that uh, just want to understand about, you know, debits coming out of their bank account and when's funding going to be required and how do payroll companies work with the new, how are they going to work with the new payroll credits that, that are going to be coming out. So we're glad to, um, I'm glad to answer any questions at bpats at associatedhcm.com uh, about anything uh, related to this area. Thank you. We're seeing the same thing and that's exactly all we're trying to do right now. Just make some sense of this information, utilize our experts in the area like yourselves, and just get some information out for people to kind of absorb and know where to go. I Scott, think I might do very a, much. Yeah, I might do a thank webinar you, when this uh, is over on, on how to do a Zoom meeting. That might be my next webinar. <laughs> at some point. Yeah, every, I, think, I think the world is learning all at the same time right now. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, thank you guys very much. I really appreciate you taking the time today. And I'm certain that our uh, collective customers and audience will appreciate it. Thank you.